Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to Gemini Reels channel. I am Humble B. And this channel, no topics are off limits. So, whatever you gotta say, whatever you gotta comment, speak your piece. So, no poor man's meal tonight. No meal under $10. I did cook dinner, however, meatloaf, mashed, meatloaf, macaroni and cheese, and some broccoli for my kids. So, no poor man's meal tonight. But, I do have a lot to talk about. And I have to, if I'm looking down, that's me looking at my phone, if I'm looking down. So anyway, oh, but I, I do have a salad <laughs> that I'm going to bust down because I'm hungry. Okay. Anyway, so this is a video responding to all of the feedback that I got from the last video. And I also told you that I was going to do a second video of, um, because it was too much to do in the first, in the first video. So basically, um, I'm going to talk about how family members called me that I haven't spoken to in literally months in years. Literally. That's one. Uh, first of all, if I talk and I say anything, it is the truth, okay? It is the truth. It's something, it's everything that I witnessed for myself, and it's also from what I heard from the source, okay? So whatever I say about anything that my daughter encountered while she was in forced to care with my aunt is what either I saw myself or what Keeney told me. Well, Tanil, because that's my daughter's name, Tanil. We call her Keeney. So if I want to talk on this video and on YouTube, I could do that, okay? It's my business to tell. As long as I'm not telling your business, then that's all that matters, all right? And I'm not telling anybody's business but my own and what happened to me and the ordeal that I went through. Okay, let's just get that out the way right now. So I don't care about family calling me. I don't care about that. I don't care about how family feels because family didn't step up and speak up then, so don't step up and speak up now. That's how I feel. And I'm trying not to disrespect anybody. Any of my aunts and my uncles, I don't want to disrespect anybody. All I'm here to do is tell the truth. Why? Because I don't need a therapist to sit in front of and have a therapy session with a therapist. I don't need to do that. I got YouTube, I have a platform, and that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so... First thing is first, okay? Um, my, to my brother, Mustafa, yeah. So he said I'm miserable. I could never be miserable, my brother. I'm never miserable, never been miserable, okay? So let's just clear the air with that. I'm not miserable, period. You wanna be on the side that's wrong, okay? I don't want you to be on the side that's my side. I don't want you to be on the side that's their side or her side. I want you to be on the side that is right, okay? Period. So, no, I'm not miserable, just to let you know that. I, and I did block my brother, yes, because he was he was trying to come for me in some way. I felt like he was being very facetious with the comments and the text messages that he was sending me back and forth. So, no, I don't want to talk to my brother. Same mother, same father, by the way, who acts like he's against me and doesn't like me. Um, so, first order of business is a text message I got from my Uncle Lenny. Oh, one of my uncles, excuse me, because I'm trying not to use names because I don't want anybody taking me to court for slander, libel, or defamation. So, one of my uncles called me, which is actually not slander, libel, or defamation, if it's true, okay, which I have proof that I got text messages. So, he texted me the other day. I cannot read it verbatim because I'm on video and I don't want to go into my phone right now. So, he told me, he asked me to keep his kids out of my mouth, out of my mouth. And the only thing I have to say to that is I did send him a message and I told him I wasn't talking about your kids. I was using you as an example, not to be malicious, but for you to understand that you don't feel a certain situation until it happens to you. So I brought up his kids and his kids not being here to bring up an example of why he shouldn't be talking and, and having commentary about someone else's um, situation, especially when they're losing their child. So that's what I, I was, that was the point that I was trying to bring to him. Of course, nobody's going to see the point that I'm trying to bring. And unfortunately, everybody has amnesia. Nobody remembers 13 and a half years ago when my kids were in the system and then forced to kill with my aunt. But you know what? I remember everything. Hmm. I remember everything. So with that being said, um... My aunt seems to have everybody, because I don't want to say that she's not my aunt, because my aunt number two, she called me the other day and said that she didn't like the fact that I was saying that the foster aunt 
Oh, the, the, the aunt that adopted my son wasn't my aunt. She didn't like that I said that. So I said, okay, no problem. All right, so my aunt number two didn't like it. So, okay, now, now that we got that out the way. So, my uncle, whole nother situation, whole nother story. This is what I remember, okay? This is what I remember. Oh, and I'm not, if I'm not going to have luck from doing this video, oh, because I, I guess I'm going to go to hell or I'm going to go outside and get hit by a car or I'm not going to have no luck doing this video, these videos. First of all, my aunt, the one that adopted my son and had my kids in foster care, never had a conversation with me, never asked for one, never brought one up, never wanted one, not on her radar, okay? So why now that I'm doing a video, why is it that, oh, everyone has something to say? I don't, and it's always the ones that has the indiscretions that always has an opinion. I wonder why the hell that is. That is so odd to me. If I had indiscretions going on or past indiscretions, I would mind my business. I would be like, oh, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Let me mind my business. That's what some of my family members need to do. Mind your business. This don't have nothing to do. If I didn't mention your name in my videos, you have nothing to comment on. You have nothing to say. Yes, you have an opinion, but keep that shit inside. Okay? Because with the indiscretions that certain people that have commented and said, they need to be quiet. Because if it was me, I would want to sit in the corner somewhere where nobody can see me and I would pray that they don't remember what the, the bullshit that I did or the indiscretions. I would pray that they don't remember. All right. So, out of the way with that because there's so much that I need to cover. So much. Okay? And I'm trying to do it in... I guess like 20 minutes because I ain't got all night, but I do have to eat a little bit of my salad because I am hungry. So, everybody walking around like aunt number one is a saint. But, and let me tell you this before I say anything, let me tell you this. If y'all don't listen to nothing I say, that's fine. I don't care. Whatever. It is what it is. Some of this shit can't be made up. But Sunil is the one that lived this. Okay? Sunil is the one that went through this. As a result of going, being in foster care with my aunt for three years, as a result of that, Sunil suffers from depression. Along with me having a little bit to do with her depression. And that's in a whole nother video. All, all in itself. A whole nother video. So, I'm not trying to have this long and drawn out i'm not trying to go back and forth however if you do want to leave a comment or whatever whether it be right wrong nasty and different i take them all bad criticism a good criticism i take them all i don't care <laughs> keep it going i i don't care but i do know that i'm going to say what i have to say that's what i do know and nobody's going to stop me the only being that could stop me is god and that's if he mutes my mouth and takes away my voice box that's all that's the only being that could do so okay so i wanted to point out how everybody is acting like they forgot about what my daughter was going through while she was in foster care with my aunt but this is what i remember for myself forget about what Tanil remembers okay for a little while forget about that i remember that my aunt's daughter the foster mom, my aunt, her daughter busted my daughter's lip. My daughter had to be maybe six, going on seven or even seven. I remember she busted her lip. And I remember when I came up to the projects, I asked Mumu Kini what happened to her lip. And she said, Amani busted her lip. I said, well, why and what happened? I'm asking her. She told me. I guess Kini must have got fly out of her mouth because that's what Kini does, gets fly out of her mouth. She don't care what she say or how she say it. And that's just it. Always been her personality since she was a kid. Always. Even to this day, it's even got worse. She busted her lip. I reported it to the agency. Catholic Charities. I reported it to the agency. I think 1991 Castle Hill Avenue. No, 1991 Westchester Avenue. Catholic Charities. Terrence Jones was the caseworker on my case. And I told Terrence Jones. I said, Terrence, cousin, foster cousin busted to Neil's lip. He said, okay, when asked me questions here and there, like he was interested, he wasn't. 
So he went a week later to go investigate, to go to aunt number one, foster mother's house. So I'm saying to myself, well, damn, in a week, a busted lip, that shit going hell. What are you going there for now? But that's because his lazy ass didn't want to do his job. And that's because they probably were praising my aunt so much that they didn't care that her lip was busted or whatever the case is. I don't know. I can't speak for Terrence Jones at Catholic Charities, but I can't speak about what I did witness. Okay. And I know that I remember, you know what? I'm going to not use names because this person has really nothing to do with it because she's an outsider. So I'm just going to leave her out of it. But she was there when I said something about it, about her busting my daughter's lip. It took everything in me, everything in me. To, I kept my composure. Why? Because, like I said, everything that I said or did was used against me. Period. They didn't want to hear me. They didn't want to hear nothing. Period. My daughter went through an ordeal. My daughter told me about how she was being treated, about what was going on the whole time that I was seeing her in the agency. Can't do nothing about it. If you tell the agency that your daughter's lip got busted in the care of a foster parent and... They didn't do anything about it. What hope do you have? None. I was hopeless. You hear me? I was hopeless. Okay? That's how I felt. And all I could remember Keeney saying to me when I said, well, did you tell aunt number one? She said, yeah. I said, well, what did she say? She said, I will never forget that you lied on my daughter. That's what the foster mother said. That's what the foster mother said. And like I said, if you don't believe nothing I say in this video, that's fine. It doesn't matter. You don't have to believe me. But... Keeney got a Facebook. I'll give you her Facebook name. She got a Facebook. <laughs> I remember going to get my daughter because her feet smell like shit. I remember going to get her a pair of sneakers. And I remember that aunt number one, foster aunt, told Terrence that I was taking her out of the house. When I wasn't supposed to. No, I wasn't supposed to be taken out of the house. But her feet were smelling like shit. I wanted her to get fitted for the right size shoe. And I wanted to buy her the shoe. Period. Period. That's it. But you told Terrence that... I took her out when I wasn't supposed to. Oh, by the way, y'all. Elias saw the video. I wonder who let him see the video. That's what I wonder. And also, he, he, I don't know, somehow asked my brother. And, no, my brother asked him, how did he see the video? And he said his mother. My brother said, which one? He said, my name. I haven't seen Elias and I don't know how long. So I don't know how Habiba showed him the video. That's what I don't know. But if he's being coached, that's all fine, well, and good. He, if he's being coached. He did call me today. He did call me today. And, um... He asked me, um, he told me he saw the video. He called me today. He told me he saw the video. And I was like, well, what did you feel about it? I said, oh, yeah, for, you know, first thing first. I did say, oh, yeah. He was like, yeah. I said, well, what did you feel about the video? He said his words exactly. It was good. So maybe, I don't know. I don't know if he was being coached. I don't know if he really felt the video was good. I don't know. But that's not what I heard, though. So, anyway, it's just crazy how the stuff that kids absorb when they're children, it gets misconstrued and misinterpreted because they're children, they're innocent, they don't know any better. This video is not intended to hurt anyone. My videos about my, about aunt number one is... Clearly to shed some light on the situation that happened that I felt like I had no control over and I was hopeless with it. So everything is now me. Everything is, oh, she didn't go to the visits. Oh, she didn't do that. Oh, excuse me. One second, please. <laughs> excuse me. And that will not be edited. <laughs> so, anyway, 
Um, I was looking for this big ass stack of papers that I got from the state about my case, the big ass stack. So, aunt number one was saying I wasn't coming to visit. This is, this is what kills me, right? I probably mentioned this in the last video. If I wasn't coming to visits for one child, how was I coming to the visits for the other? We had the visits the same day, the same time, court date, same day, same time, same case, same case on the calendar, same kids, Tanil Jania Kalab, Ilyas Abdurrahim. This is all in one court date. So, I, like I said, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. I don't want to sound repetitive. I don't want to be repetition, um, repetitive, excuse me. I don't want to be repetitive. But I'm, you know, people always have an opinion. Like I said, just like Tamika always had an opinion. Oh, are you going to court? Because you going to court, bitch. If I ain't go to no court, the hell I get to nail back if I didn't go to no court? Hello, use your own fucking brain. Stop asking me questions that are easily answered if you just sit back and think. Okay? Like, that pisses me off. So, to me, she didn't do anything good for me anyway. Other than cause me 13 and a half years of pain. Okay? From not having my son. To the point where I don't know the favorite color of my son. So I always cutting off communication pretty much. I told y'all the other day I was on the phone with him last week or two weeks ago, whatever, however long ago it was. And we were talking and Tahir and him were jiving on the phone and President Bella was, oh, I love you and this, that, and the third. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, oh, I'll talk to you guys. I'll catch you guys later. I'll catch you guys later. What the WTF just happened? Because that was just weird to me, how he just abruptly got off the phone. I'm like, well, what the hell? I didn't even bother to call him back. I said, well, maybe he couldn't talk or he can't talk to me in front of certain people. Because that's the only thing that I gathered from somebody just hanging up the phone just so abruptly. I was just like, wow. Anyway, um, I don't think that she did a good thing. Period. I don't think she did a good thing. Not for me. Maybe for herself. Foster care is a business. Period. Foster care is a business. You hire these people to uh, do a job. I guess do a job that a parent couldn't do or that a job, or do a job of a parent or they hire you to be a parent. Okay? It's a business, pretty much. They get paid to do a service. Period. But instead of... I found my own services. They wanted me to go to parenting. That's, I think that's like standard for every uh, person that loses their children. I think that's standard to go to parenting and anger management. I didn't go to anger management because I wasn't angry. But hurt, yes, absolutely just devastated that my kids, wow, my mother just passed away in april and i'm losing my kids in november like that was just it devastated me so i wasn't angry i was hurt to the point of i don't even know what kind of i can't describe depression because i've never been depressed so and i don't understand depression myself so i'm not going to touch on depression because i don't know anything about it i do know that i was just devastated and i trusted my aunt to do the right thing, do the right thing by me, and she didn't. She was getting paid for my kids, because my cousin, I'm not gonna mention his name, he asked me, how did I feel like Elias was a meal ticket, or my kids was a meal ticket for her? And all I could say is, what's the people get paid? Like, what, what don't you understand about that? You get paid to be a foster parent, it's a job. Like, what do you, I don't understand what he didn't understand. I was just lost. But anyway, some people act dumb when they don't want to see what the truth is. Or they, some people act retarded. So, whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to mention his name. But yeah, I did talk to him the other day or yesterday or the day before. And he did not like the fact that I put this video up. And I did not care. <laughs> Period. And I don't care. Unapologetic, remember? <laughs> this is the unapologetic Gemini. So, all I know is that the only thing that I'm guilty of
and trust in my aunt. To do the right thing. And she did not. <laughs> she felt like she could do a better job than me as a parent, I guess. Or Elias was money for her and Kenny. Kenny was the money for her for what, two, two years, two and a half years? Um, I believe that with every five of my being. Can't nobody tell me nothing different. And my daughter, she, poor thing. She lost. That girl's so lost. And I feel so bad for her. Because she is truly lost. And my daughter blames me for a lot of things. She blames, she says that I didn't fight for her. That I didn't fight for her. <laughs> if she only knew I was in that courtroom for three years by myself. With all these lawyers, all these people that went to school for a thousand years to get their degrees. And here's a little old me. Girl from the projects, only got a high school diploma, don't know nothing they talking about really. Lawyer got to translate everything. How the fuck do you translate English to English? I will never know. But that's what happened. And unfortunately, not knowing your rights is not an excuse. <laughs> that ain't their fucking problem that you don't know your rights. And it's unfortunate also that you have your own family working against you with nobody on your side. And that's also unfortunate because at least if you had somebody on your side, you could be like, yeah, I'll go fight this. Let me go learn this word. Let me go do that. No, nope, didn't do it. That's not what I had. So I did have my, a, a few, well, people from my father's side, really. That's who I had in my corner. But as far as the people I grew up with, the Hayes family, <clears throat> the people that <clears throat> I knew all my life. I didn't have them to back me up. But they were talking about me, though. Like a dog behind my back. They were talking about me. And it's sad that they were. Keeney, she doesn't think I defended her. She just doesn't know that I did. I've defended her as much as I possibly could without getting myself caught up in, in nonsense, pretty much, with the, with the law. Okay? So, the only thing that I really, like blame myself for when it comes to her is when she was telling me about everything she went through while she was in forced to care with aunt number one i felt like damn i feel so bad for my baby i was helpless i was hopeless i couldn't do anything i got this legal aid ass bullshit going on no representation no money to pay for good representation a whole lot of things were running through my head at that time and it resulted in me trying to understand and empathize with her and be her friend more than be a disciplinarian and be her mother. So that's what I really blame myself for. Like not really being the mother and the, the disciplinarian and the stern and st like stern person in her life. That's the only real thing that I, um, that I do apologize for because it ended up in our relationship being the way somewhat being the way that it is okay so her going into foster care with my family that played a big part of it I can't say if it was 70 percent 90 percent 30 percent it played a big part of why and what she is molded into today okay I'm not gonna sit here and act like I was the perfect parent being a parent does not come with the handbook I always told to that I've had a lot of talks with to about being a parent and my style of parenting and whatever else to didn't understand it and that's just what happened okay when you could go on Facebook and you could talk about your mother okay where people could see it in the family people that you know I don't really care for <laughs> care for clearly you have a there's something in yourself that you need to like fix but i also told my daughter you need to go to therapy because you cannot fix yourself you need to cope because some people just can't cope and she cannot cope she's one of the people that carries the weight of the world on her shoulder and she can't cope and that's just point blank period i'm not a therapist i didn't go to school for 50 years to be a therapist i'm just saying she can't cope just like my brother, he can't cope either. My brother, he lashes out, but lashes out in a different way. Mustafa is who I'm talking about. He can't cope either. 
He can't. He has an outlet. Okay? That, that's his coping mechanism, his outlet. So, me being miserable, me, my brother, same mother, same father telling me I'm miserable. Okay, right. Far from miserable, darling. Far from that. I ain't never been miserable. Unhappy sometimes, yes, like a regular normal human being. He's not on my side. He's never been. He acts like he has something against me, like I said. He, he's just not there. He does not have my back. He doesn't. He prefers to hear whatever it is that he wants to hear. He got something against me. I don't know what it is. One day I might find out. But right now, I have no idea what he has against me. And it really doesn't matter. But like I said, if you don't believe nothing that I say in this video or any of my other videos. What's Keeny, what's Keeny Facebook name? Captain Tanil TJ? Captain TJ. Look up. Find her. She'll tell you. If you really want to know, don't ask me. And I won't tell you. But I know that anything that I know, if I didn't see it myself, I heard it from my kid. And I believe my kid. All right? And as a result, my kid is damaged. Period. My kid is damaged. But she is what I know not to do with these two that I have. She def definitely is the lesson learned. And okay, so that's what I do know. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. That's what I do know. And what I do know is that I'm not lying on anybody. That's what I know. That these are not lies. This is not just to give views. Because this channel is not about just losing Elias. That's not what my channel is about. My channel is about a whole, whole bunch of other shit that y'all going to see if y'all just tune in. Okay, it's about a whole bunch of other stuff. This is just something that I felt I needed to do. No therapist can help me. I've been a therapist before. And I've been a therapist because I was mandated to go to therapy, not because I just chose to go to therapy. <laughs> okay? And all of them are the same. I've never met a therapist that wasn't just like the other therapists, which is why I don't like them because none of them have their own styles of what they do. It's one thing to do textbook style, and it's another to have you see your own style of how you do things. I never trust a therapist, especially when they know that you have a case with ACS. Oh, God. That's all they got to put on their desk. Oh, the case with ACS. So they already know. It's like a freaking, it's like, it's memorized. It's like, okay, this is what we have to do. This is how we take care. This is how we do that. They don't treat you like a person that just comes into their office. No. Once that shit says ACS or whatever on it, whatever the hell they, however they figure out that it's an ACS case or not even figure out, but however it's laid out on their desk, that's how they treat it. Just like an ACS situation. Because I'm pretty sure with the stuff that they, if I was coming in as a regular person, just that needed to talk to or speak to a therapist, they wouldn't have treated it the same way, period. I'm sure of that. I know I didn't go to school for 100 years. I'm just sure of it. <laughs> it's called common sense, okay, from the way that they used to speak to me and the way that I know how therapists outside of the ACS network works. Yeah. Okay. And um, like I said, I found my own services because these lazy bastards, they did not come through with any information for me to go to therapy or to go to well I had to go I had to go to therapy and what the hell else oh parenting classes I went to Harlem Children's Zone cycle 26 expected I went there okay and that agency, Terrence Jones, didn't find shit for me. He was the worker. He didn't do shit, but sat on his black ass. That's all he did. He ain't fat. I'm about to say his fat ass. He sat on his black ass and did nothing for me. I did everything for myself. He, I thought they were supposed to help you find services and all of this other stuff. No, they didn't do that. Nope. I did it on my own. Anyway, this concludes this part of the video. If you like it, if you don't, like <laughs> thumbs down, thumbs up, it doesn't matter. Um, subscribe, because there's more to come. Maybe not about Elias, but if anybody comments and want to know anything, you could comment. That's fine. Comment. You could use an anonymous thing, because I know a lot of people don't want their names up in bullshit, which is fine. 
Be anonymous. It makes me no difference. I will answer any questions you have. Like I said in my last video, I'm just tired of people cackling about what they think they know about and they don't know shit. You don't know the inside story. That's what I don't like about people. You make comments, you do this, you talk about it amongst yourself, and you don't know what is going on in real life. You have no clue. But you, all you know, all I know is that they have opinions. These people have opinions about your life. Nah. Not at all. Stop having opinions about Habiba's life. And people act like, oh, ain't nobody thinking about Habiba. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. I don't, you know how much I hurt. Lord have mercy. Yes, you are. You are. You, you're trying to figure it out. Yes, you are. Because that's how nosy people do. They try to figure your shit out. Okay, so, yeah. You, you're trying to figure it out. Whatever's going on with me. And, um, and whatever was going on with my son at the time, even if it's not on your radar now, was at one point... Yeah, because people, and especially in the projects, they like to know about shit like that. They want to know what happened. And the only, the only thing I don't like about that is that people are one-sided. They don't listen to one side of the story. It's your side, my side, the truth. Period. The truth is in there somewhere. You just got to figure it out and try to differentiate and sort through it like fucking laundry. That's how you got to do it. But like I said, I have no reason to lie on anybody. Everything that I say here is the truth. That's it. <laughs> Subscribe, like, thumbs up, comment, whatever. I'm out.